What's up YouTube, Matt from Wii Sports here, back again with another perfectly advertiser friendly video, but just in case the FTC is watching, this video is not for kids, I am COPPA compliant, please don't take me down almighty Susan Wojcicki, overlord of YouTube. But yeah, based off the title, you already know what this video is about, we are talking about the most offensive and controversial designer brand scandals of 2019, admittedly one half happened around November, December 2018, but well, I mean, I haven't talked about it yet, so we will today. I tried to form a list of stuff that really pissed people off on Twitter as per usual, so no, this is not a list of things that strongly bothered me personally, although I would say, compared to lists of the past, this actually has stuff that was probably actually made to be offensive, as opposed to other stuff that is uh, a bit overblown. But I will let you guys be the judge, as always. Let me know what you think in the comments section below regarding everything we're gonna talk about today. But first, my friend John, who runs the brand at the moment, and I have collabed on a few items which are currently available to buy right now. Yes, I am finally dropping product and these collab items will be available on the At The Moment website from November 29th until December 6th. After that, they'll be gone forever. So this will be a part of his uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale, which has already begun. So newer products, including our collab pieces, are 25 to 30% off, and all old stock is already up to 50% off. So I would highly recommend you go over to the site and go check some stuff out. And I will go into greater detail on the sale and the collab at the end of the video, but I'm just really excited to finally release something for once. So yeah, very exciting times right now. So make sure to go and support if there's anything you're interested in purchasing. Uh, feel free to ask any questions on uh, Instagram. First on this list, we have a series of figurines and keychains released by Prada back in late 2018, which were dubbed Prada Malia or Prada Malia. The line was marketed as a new family of mysterious tiny creatures that are one part biological, one part technological, and all parts Prada. And no, I did not make that up, that's really how Prada marketed these on their website. But there was one figure in particular that caused massive outrage on social media and even caused protesters to go to the Prada store in New York and let their voices be heard. And it was the monkey figurine with enlarged red lips that many claimed evoked racist Sambo-like imagery. Where one day earlier, the Prada windows at Broadway and Prince looked like this. I'm horrified. The displays had featured animal charms and figurines that evoked blackface. Civil rights lawyer Chinure Azie had just returned from a Washington museum and an exhibit on blackface when she saw the Prada displays. The company in a statement said Prada Group abhors racist imagery. The Pradmalia are fantasy charms composed of elements of the Prada oeuvre. They are imaginary creatures not intended to have any reference to the real world and certainly not blackface. Prada Group never had the intention of offending anyone and we abhor all forms of racism and racist imagery. In this interest, we will withdraw the characters in question from display and circulation. Although Prada immediately pulled all products that had the monkey character off of store shelves and from their website, many online were unsatisfied with the brand's response to the situation and many Twitter users wanted consumers to boycott Prada entirely. So shortly after this, Prada released a follow-up statement on their Twitter account with an attached press release, which basically said that the company will pledge to improve diversity training and form an advisory council to guide in their efforts for more inclusion to prevent something like this from happening ever again. This fiasco happened in December 2018, and it was a pretty big news story at the time. Whether or not Prada intended to have their design evoke racist imagery is entirely up for debate, and it seems like the two sides at the time were either, yes, they did it on purpose, how could they not know, or maybe they really just made a figurine without thinking of the historical context that the styling may be perceived to be inspired by. But regardless of how you feel, the story was well publicized all over mainstream media, but in 2019 something happened. 
Magically, many other brands had their own racist design scandals pop up. In early 2019, Gucci was the first of the year to face a massive backlash over an $890 wool sweater that featured a roll-up collar that covered the lower face with a wide red lip outline around the mouth. And what is important to note is this was only about one to two months after Prada's figurine incident. Gucci's fashion-forward top, getting more complaints than compliments. Critics on social media slamming this $890 black turtleneck with a red cutout for the mouth. You mean to tell me no one saw the awful blackface resemblance? The luxury fashion label apologizing on its website and pulling the item, adding it is fully committed to increasing diversity throughout our organization. Just like Prada, Gucci released their own statement online vowing to hire a diversity council, etc, etc. It's essentially the exact same response that Prada gave, and I feel like reading it would just be redundant. Also, something I forgot to mention is that Gucci released the sweater in February during Black History Month, which was also where some of the outrage came from. Not too long after this, Burberry came under fire for a hoodie that debuted during London Fashion Week. The hoodie was a part of their Autumn Winter 2019 line and featured drawstrings tied in the shape of a hangman's noose. Some people across social media claimed the design was racist and evoked the memory of lynchings, while others claimed it was trying to make light of suicide. So Burberry got hit with double the criticism, but also made plenty of headlines across various news sites. Burberry Chief Creative Officer Ricardo Tichy formerly of Givenchy, issued an apology stating, It was never my intention to upset anyone. We have removed it from the collection, and I will make sure that this does not happen again. And just like the other two brands, the some talks of diversity councils were mentioned once again. And no, Gucci and Burberry weren't the only two brands with controversies in February. Literally within the exact same week, Katy Perry was also being called out for a shoe collaboration she had with Global Brands Group. The shoes were to be available on KatyPerryCollections.com, as well as in retailers like Dillard's and Walmart. The two styles in question were the Aura Face Block Heel and the Rue Face Slip On Loafer. Both styles were adorned with protruding eyes, a nose, and full red lips, so I'm sure you know the conclusion that was drawn from the design. Katy Perry has come under fire for a design that some say evokes blackface. The Katy Perry collection has pulled two styles of these shoes in response to the controversy. Perry is the latest big name to be accused of using blackface imagery. In a statement, Katy says she was, quote, saddened to hear the design was being compared to painful images reminiscent of blackface. She says the collection was envisioned as a nod to modern art and surrealism. Our intention was never to inflict any pain, she added. Now, before we get to the last two items on this list, I would like to switch up the conversation slightly. Call me crazy, but I have a fashion conspiracy. So grab your tinfoil hats, people, because I'm about to go full Eddie Bravo. Okay, I'm not gonna go full Eddie Bravo, but honestly, I just think it is highly possible that Prado's figurine was a genuine tone-deaf mishap. But as the saying goes, all press is good press, and I truly believe Gucci as well as Burberry did release subliminally offensive items purely because they know the amount of coverage it gets on social media. And regardless of the initial backlash they receive, it almost always 100% dies down and has no negative long-lasting effect on the company's sales. And I believe that the brands realize how popular outrage culture is online and purposely make something vaguely offensive in hopes that it goes viral from being called out. And since it's usually not extremely in your face, they can hide under the guise of Oh, we didn't know, we're so sorry. Another thing worth mentioning is a lot of people who say they want to boycott these brands aren't even customers in the first place. So how do you boycott something that is above your tax bracket? I mean, I'm sure hardcore Gucci, Prada, and Burberry customers could absolutely care less about all the online outrage. I mean, hell, even a few celebrities that claimed they would stop wearing Gucci due to the sweater scandal ended up wearing Gucci again several months later. So it proves that all of this outrage and cancel culture ends up amounting to what? 
um, some diversity councils being created that were probably already going to be created or probably already existed. I'm telling you right now, this is all just a marketing ploy that is feeding off of the manufactured outrage. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. There's going to be a new series called Fashion Conspiracies coming soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But anyway, back to the video. In March 2019, Louis Vuitton pulled their Michael Jackson-themed collection from its Summer Menswear 2019 lineup. After HBO's documentary Leaving Neverland documented the alleged child abuse by the late pop icon, the collection was shown in January at Paris Fashion Week and was due to hit stores in June of the same year. But in light of the film, an LV spokeswoman said the items would no longer be made available for purchase. LV also commented that they were not aware of the documentary at the time of the event. Virgil Abloh also went on record stating, I am aware that in light of this documentary, the show has caused emotional reactions. I strictly condemn any form of child abuse, violence, or infringement against any human rights. And, I mean, considering that menswear is a relatively small part of Louis Vuitton's business, pulling the Michael Jackson-themed items were said to not have a major impact on the company's sales. Lastly on this list, we have an incident that occurred within the last 10 days regarding a matching striped shirt and trousers released by Spanish luxury brand Loewe. The ensemble was priced at $1,840, and many were outraged when they believed the garments took design inspiration from World War II era concentration camp uniforms. Loewe designer Jonathan Anderson described the collection as an odd type of fantasy like an early Harry Potter. Admittedly though, the resemblance to the concentration camp uniform is pretty spot on. A side-by-side -side comparison was posted on Instagram by Diet Prada, and many called the brand anti-Semitic and demanded it be removed from stores, and it was pulled shortly after, with Loewe also giving your typical generic apology that pretty much mirrors apologies I've already read from other brands, so there's certainly no need to read another one of those. But anyway, that completes this list. I know the structure in this video was slightly different than usual, but overall, I hope you guys still enjoyed. Do you guys think that all of these brands purposely made offensive items with the intent to generate headlines? Was it some of them? Or were some of these just misunderstandings and mishaps that slipped through the cracks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, I want to know what topics you would like me to cover for the new fashion conspiracy video series that I have planned. Yes, I will be wearing a tinfoil hat when I film those videos. I don't, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty ridiculous series that I'm pretty excited for. Also, please make sure to go check out my collab with At The Moment. We have four hoodies and one long sleeve that we worked on the graphic designs for together, I'd say for the last month or so, and the goal was pretty much to make something simple and wearable, so the graphics and color choices aren't too loud, everything fits true to size, and I would say a lot of the inspo came from stuff I liked when I was a kid, like a lot of older skate brands, as well as old advertisements, and uh, some vintage warehouse like party promotional flyers. So anything I make from this small collection is essentially going to fund my actual standalone brand that will have a few cut and sew items. A planned release for that is set for spring summer 2020, so any support I get from this would be heavily appreciated as it will help fund my future larger projects. Also, like I said, all newer products on the site are 25 to 30 percent off, and that includes the collab stuff that we worked on, and older stock is up to 50 percent off which will be applied at checkout once the items are in your cart. If you have any questions regarding any of the items, feel free to DM me on Instagram or hit up at the moment's Instagram page, which will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support, even though honestly, sometimes I really don't deserve it with how inconsistent I can be, but it really does mean the world to me. Peace out, YouTube.